What now, Megan? You are exposed. Megan 2.0 failed to create an alibi for the infamous PR strategy. Hello, friends. Welcome to Breaking Royal News about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Time to try a fresh strategy. The royal family didn't care that Meghan Markle was suicidal and that Kate Middleton made her weep since Meghan went, according to Meghan Markle, who complained bitterly about every insult and used several media outlets to suggest that they were racist. Poof, forget she was ever there. She has been replaced with Meghan Markle 2.0, who is laid back and easygoing, as icy as ice. Why do you find it difficult to trust this? Well, just take a look at her on Monday, when she made her first public appearance of the year, introducing a TED Talk in all her soft focus splendor via video, sporting grayishes, pinks, and shiny hair while beaming with a smile. Too little? Later that evening, while watching the LA Lakers versus Memphis Grizzlies NBA playoff game, she and Harry were photographed cuddling. A kiss cam captured their giggles as Meghan's strategically positioned arm prevented Harry from going in for a kiss. See, the new Meghan is carefree, joyful, and living her best life in public with absolutely no stiltedness. Nothing bothers this Meghan, not even a whole country of Britons who are undoubtedly contemplating what the late Queen purportedly stated before Prince Philip's burial as they waited King Charles's coronation. Meghan won't be attending, thank God. Yes, our former Duchess Difficult would have us think that she has decided to skip the coronation, despite weeks of back-and-forth discussions with Buckingham Palace about what responsibilities she, Prince Harry, and their two kids would have to follow the road less traveled, to ease the burden on the important players, not to divert attention. This is in spite of several claims that Harry and Meghan threatened to cancel the trip if they didn't get a spot on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. With the royals, who genuinely do their jobs without complaining, they refuse to go on reality shows and sign books where they reveal all their secrets and animosity. Isn't that what the brand is? Resentful, vindictive, small-minded, and profit-driven. Racism is being yelled everywhere. She sought attention like a special operations squad searching for a valuable target, then demanded that everyone leave her and Harry alone, as wonderfully parodied in South Park's worldwide privacy tour. Who among us didn't think, yep, that sounds about right, when news surfaced on Friday alleging that Meghan wasn't attending the coronation due to an unpleasant conversation with Charles, personal letter she had written expressing displeasure about unconscious bias among the royal family. False, claims Meghan. Never, ever, never, ever. She would never risk it, would she? Certainly not after she claimed that a senior royal had made disrespectful remarks about the skin tone of her child as she sat across from Oprah Winfrey in 2021 with her smug Cheshire grin firmly in place. Simply said, Meghan doesn't tend to dwell on things. Never would she accept a prize from the Kennedys, America's own pretend royal family, for standing up to structural racism in the royal family, only to have her husband retract that statement a few weeks later. She and Harry are so morally upright. Their accounts line up perfectly. We may genuinely trust what they say when they speak. Omid Scobie, Megan's spokeswoman, who is also known as Scooby Dooby Doo to us devoted rubberneckers, issued a stern denial over the weekend. Any guesses as to how it started? The Duchess of Sussex, whose title we will never ever abandon, is going about her life in the present, not thinking about correspondence from two years ago, related to conversations from four years ago, according to a recent report. Any insinuation to the contrary is untrue and plainly absurd. Let's dissect this claim, shall we? Get the scalpels ready. Let's chop it up and throw it out as the grade A medical garbage that it is. Megan isn't thinking about previous resentments, is she? Please, 
Her whole time on the international stage has been spent thinking over discussions and mail from the past, then coming up with methods to commercialize such resentments. Her superpower is this. It's related to her Genesis narrative. Do you all remember when we first met her? It wasn't because of the uninteresting lifestyle blog she maintained or that unremarkable TV soap. No, it was a Vanity Fair cover article announcing her as the heir apparent to the British throne, with the headline reading, She's Absolutely Crazy Over Harry. What did Meghan Markle do in exchange for that fantastic article? A ringing endorsement by a major U.S. journal, positioning her as a future royal with the palace's implied backing. You guessed it, she yelled racism. It seemed sense that one of the most liberal and politically correct journals in the U.S., headed by a woman who is half American and half Indian, would want to defame Meghan Markle. Markle's grievance? The VF cover text alluded to Judy Garland's blackface performance of the song I'm Just Wild About Harry in 1939. Who would even know that unless they were 95 years old? America and Britain haven't been so united against a common foe since World War II, but that's exactly what happened when a deeply hypocritical and ungracious woman got everything she seemed to want, immense fame, wealth, and privilege, and spent the majority of the time whining and complaining as the rest of the world battled a pandemic. Let's go to the second portion of that assertion. We implore tabloid media and different royal reporters to put an end to the grueling circus they are generating on their own. They are the sole creators. I'm sorry, but the majority of this information has not given by Meghan. Why won't the media simply leave her alone? Oprah, Time Magazine, The Cut, Variety. Our Meghan looking saint-like. Separating fluffy clouds, purple clouds, and successfully dethroning Angelina Jolie. Finding Freedom, her incorrectly named archetypes with Meghan podcast, Netflix, and Harry's novel. Indeed, the world's privacy tour. Meghan has the audacity to disparage the late queen in the Harry and Meghan Netflix reality series. Sorry, excuse me, docu-series, equating their first meeting to medieval times, dinner, and a tournament, which is something hick Americans would understand. Her distressed spouse was watching helplessly as she then ridiculed in a dramatic manner what it meant to bow before Her Majesty. This woman pushes the phrase, bite off the hand that feeds you to all new depths. But we're expected to think that Markle is choosing to forego the coronation, a momentous occasion that will be covered by media outlets everywhere because she's content with her life. Is it really that happy? Because she's too preoccupied and lofty to worry over chats and emails from four years ago. Let's not forget that her husband, who also doubles as her lapdog, published a private text message conversation between Meghan and Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge at the time, in his biography. That is obviously a serious infraction, but its importance lies in showing how small-minded and petty Meghan is, as well as how brutally she addressed her future sister-in-law, who is clearly superior to her. How angry Meghan was to store this away for later use. How self-aware she is not to recognize that her behavior only hurts one side of this argument. And it's not Kate Middleton, whose young daughter couldn't fit into her bridesmaid's dress. That conversation, which served as a lesson in American passive aggressiveness, happened in 2018. For use in his Poison Pen memoir, which was released in January, five years later, Meghan undoubtedly provided it to her husband. Therefore, pardon us if we don't believe Meghan when she tells us how crazy it is to think that she is preoccupied with years-old discontent. The Duchess of Endless Despair and Grievance will undoubtedly surpass her new cool girl avatar, but for now, the royal family has once again played their cards wisely. What does the palace think of all of this? According to Meghan's biographer Tom Bauer, everyone is delighted that she isn't attending, in the manner of the late queen. What do you think about this latest appearance of Meghan Markle alongside Harry? 
Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the following videos. Goodbye.